Hello and welcome to another episode of Android Dev 101. In today's episode, episode 13, just in time for Friday the 13th, we're going to be taking a look at the spooky and the terrifying broadcast receiver. Okay, not really spooky or terrifying, but an important part of the Android ecosystem. Broadcast receivers allow us to receive notifications when certain events occur that are broadcast to the Android ecosystem. Broadcast receivers. What are they good for? Absolutely nothing. No, just kidding. They're actually really useful in Android. And let's jump over to our Eclipse project and see how we can use them in our applications. So for today we have two projects actually, episode 13 and custom broadcaster. We'll get to the custom broadcaster in a little bit. But right now let's start with episode 13. If we open our main layout for this application we see that there's not really anything special here just kind of boilerplate auto-generated code. Same thing with our main activity. That's because most of the heavy lifting for this application is being done with the broadcast receivers. Let's take a look at the SMS broadcast rec class which extends broadcast receiver. You see we have one method in this class on receive and when we receive a broadcast we're gonna make a toast yay and then we're gonna show it. But if we look at this code we don't really see anywhere that we define what kind of broadcast we want to receive here. Uh, can even open the imports nothing special there. So how does SMS broadcast rec know what kind of broadcast to receive. Well, it's not magic, it's just not here, it's in our Android manifest. Now this is the XML view of the Android manifest. We can also see some information from the UI view, but let's jump back to the XML, it's a little easier to read. We see here our broadcast rec class, and it has an intent filter. Now this intent filter is going to say anytime someone sends a broadcast with an action, that equals the telephony SMS received, send that our way. Now this is a system broadcast that any application can listen for. So when an SMS is received, we'll receive a notification and our method will be called on receive and then we'll make a toast. So we already have that episode 13 application running. Um, let's send another SMS. See here, there's already one SMS. Let's just get rid of that. And how are we going to send an SMS? Well, it's an emulator. It doesn't really have a phone number. But luckily, that's where DDMS comes to save the day. So when we open up a DDMS, we see that the DDMS view. We see the emulator device. We select it. Now we go to this view emulator control. This allows us to do lots of different neat stuff, like simulate an SMS, simulate a GPS change, um, simulate a voice call. So we type in a number, type in a message, since we already sent hey there once, let's send hey there again. Now let's move this to the side so we can see our emulator. And when we send it, you see the SMS is received, we pop a notification, and then the general Android notification, obviously, in the notification bar. But that toast was created from our broadcast receiver. Okay, so let's jump back to Eclipse. And we'll take a look at that custom broadcaster class. Uh, sorry, project. So in the custom pro broadcaster project, that's a tongue teaser if there ever was one, there's a, uh, only one class, the main activity. If we open it up, we see it's also pretty simple. Um, let's open up the layout for the main activity. And we see in the, we're just going to look at the view, it has, you know, a simple button here, it says broadcast. Okay, so what does that button do? Let's jump back to the main activity. And we see, we grab the broadcast button, and we put an on-click listener on it. And when the button is clicked, we call a send broadcast function with an intent, which has a set action of this custom string right here. So as you see, the string com dot android dev one oh one dot custom broadcast obviously is not a system broadcast uh, because android dev one oh one, and we're creating a special broadcast here that our application or other applications that want to apply to this API can receive and receive information from. 
Okay, so how do we receive that on our end? So let's jump back to our project, our Android manifest for the episode 13 project. And we see we had another broadcast, the custom broadcast receiver, which receives intent, which has an intent filter to receive intents with the action for that same string that we saw in our custom broadcaster project. So how this works is now we can send our own broadcast and receive them on whatever application or allow other applications to receive them and the information we send with them and in the intent. Now it's important to note, um, let's open up our custom broadcast receiver. Then here we're making another toast. Yay, and showing it. But the actions you're going to want to do in the on receive have to be very simple, very quick actions because once it's closed, then that's it, you're done, your activity can be killed by the Android operating system. If you need long running or like networking or things of that nature, then you're going to want to have some kind of service that the broadcaster can communicate with, and that service can run those longer, more intense actions. But let's run our broadcast receiver, and we'll take a look at how that works. It's still loading. There we go. Starting it up. Okay, here we have our broadcast receiver with our broadcast button. Now, normally, as we've seen in previous episode, when we start an intent, that would open another application. But here, we're sending a broadcast intent. So when we click the button, we stay in the application, but we see the toast being presented. Now, this toast is from our episode 13 application, not from our custom broadcaster application. But it receives the, it receives the broadcast and it's able to make a toast appear above the whole application stack. So that's some interesting ways how you can use broadcast receivers in your applications. It's also a great way to incorporate other APIs or allow other people to use your API and communicate between applications. So thank you for joining us today and we hope you have a great Friday the 13th.